So I'm going to be showing you this really cool website called Chessbase Endgame Studies. And it's all about endgame studies. But before I go into it, I'd like to make the case for endgame studies. Because I know that for myself and friends, the very idea of endgames has long brought about rolling eyes and thinking, oh, please, not endgames. And I get it. I really do. I mean, I remember some 30, 40 years ago, there was this book that came out by the great grandmaster John Nunn, and it was called The Secrets of Rook Endgames. And I remember when I first got it, well, looked at it at the bookstore, and I thought, oh, this is going to be wonderful. I'm going to learn all about the Rook Endgames. This is going to be great. It'll be better than Smith Love's fantastic masterpiece with Levenfish. I think it was Levenfish. Anyway, I open it up and I see 400, 500 pages of reams of analysis. And it was all about king and rook versus king and rook and one pawn, really. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. 400 pages, I mean, hundreds of pages of analysis only on that one endgame combination. That's crazy. Who on earth is going to be reading this and studying this? You've got to be kidding me. And of course, I put it back and I thought, wow, some people are crazy. But this also reinforced my idea, my unfortunate bias against endgames as being dry and dull and just for lunatics. But it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. And it can be fun and entertaining as well. Now, Mark Dvoretsky, the legendary Russian trainer, wrote, of course, a wonderful book called Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual. And this isn't an encyclopedia. This is designed to teach you the fundamentals of the game. And in it, he gives clear, precise lessons on, of course, how to handle all the different kinds of endgames. And he uses endgame studies both to illustrate the basic concepts as well as the exercises to hammer in the lessons of the day. And of course, when you're solving this and looking at them, you come out with beautiful solutions. I mean, endgame studies are compositions. They're designed to not just illustrate fantastic ideas, but also do so in an aesthetic way. So they're fun. They're beautiful to watch. They can leave you wondering. And I remember personally, um, the very first endgame study that really left a mark on me that I can recall was the masterpiece by Richard Retty. And this was one that forever changed my perspective on both endgames and endgame studies. So this endgame study is really just magic. If you haven't seen it, then you're in for a surprise. And even if you do know it, I can bet that the first time you saw it, you were just left gaping. Because we all are. I mean, it's just incredible. The first thing we see is that we have the king up here at the top doing nothing. We have the pawn down here, which cannot possibly be caught. We have the white pawn all the way at the other end, stuck, and with a black king right next to it. I mean, what hope is there? The black pawn is going to go down. The white pawn is easily stopped. The king is so far away. It's hopeless, but it's not. It's a draw. And Richard Reddy illustrates really the most basic concepts of the square of promotion in such a spectacular way that it's a lesson that stays with us really forever. It really does as a chess player. So the solution here is obviously king goes to g7. Okay. The pawn goes down. No big surprise there. The king goes down to f6, and let's face it, there's no way the king is going to catch that black pawn. It's hopeless. But here is where it gets tricky. If black's pawn goes down now, okay, to h3, obviously nobody is stopping it. White has king e6. Why is that important? Because now the white pawn cannot be stopped either. If, for example, h2, c7. King b7 to stop it, right? King d7, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And if you don't do this, if you go back to, let's say, h2, c7, well, the pawn is going to promote with a check. So really, 
there's nothing going to happen. There's no saving it. Um, the win, let's say, for black, it's a draw. But okay, what if black doesn't allow that? I mean, what if after h3, instead of h3, you know, because we already saw that the pawn is going to be supported, we immediately come to grab that black pawn, that white pawn. Well, then white plays king e5. And it's just astonishing. The king is here. And now, again, if we play h3, king d6, and again, the white pawn is going to queen as well. And if you don't play h3, if you decide to grab that pawn, well, suddenly white is back in the game and able to stop the black pawn. I mean, it's just amazing. And after you've seen this from that starting position, which at first view, looked completely hopeless. I don't know about you, but my personal definition of what is possible and impossible was really changed. Never, ever conclude automatically that something is impossible just because it looks that way. You never know. Endgame studies have the ability to combine rigor of calculation with rich imagination. And Mark Dvoretsky was a stout proponent of using endgame studies in one's regular training regime. He said that these provided a way to work with consistent calculation as well as keeping your endgame skills on its toes. But what makes endgame studies so much better than, let's say, a complex middle game or an endgame with many pieces and technically interesting or theoretically interesting aspects? Well, endgame studies have a single clear solution. There is no multiple ways to get to there. This forces you to be extremely precise in the way you calculate that position. And let's face it, there will be more than a few times in your games, whether in the middle game or even the end game, where precise calculation is gonna be absolutely required, where only not just one move, but one sequence will allow you to either save the game or win it. So when you first open the Chessbase Endgame Studies app, you're presented with this screen, which really can look kind of intimidating. I mean, there's a lot going on. You have a board in the middle. That's the easy part. Then you have all of these little boards and a bunch of weird options on the left. And you have that orange part that has a button saying radar board, and you don't know what the heck that means either. And finally, you have the buttons on the top. And you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, this is going to be a lot of work. But really, it isn't. I promise you. It's actually really easy. The buttons at the top are pretty easy to understand. Take back, make move, flip board, analysis, which turns on the engine. That's pretty straightforward. The only thing that you might be curious about, of course, is share, which is for social media, and copy link. Copy link is a little bit different than the share in that it sends a link to the clipboard that you can share, which will open up the page of this app to the exact end game that you were looking at. The left side is where we're going to begin our explanations. This is the search system. Because this isn't like tactics where end games could be categorized by difficulty level and ELOs and whatnot, you can't really do the quiz like the tactics app. You have to do it a little bit differently. So you're going to be splitting it up into material. For example, here you have all of the options possible and below you have the various piece combinations possible. So for example, if you look closely here, you'll notice that it says greater or equal to zero. And what that means is that it will allow for basically either zero pawns or as many as possible. But suppose you wanted to look for only end game studies with three pawns or less and the king and nothing else. How would you do that? Well, the first thing to do would be to set all of the pieces to zero except for the pawns. So we click on here, we go to the top, we click on zero, we go to the top, we click on zero, top, zero, top, zero. And this is basically going to allow us to filter exactly the different piece combinations that we're looking for. Once we've done this and we've set all of the pieces to zero except for the pawns, we now want to set it to exactly three pawns or less. Here it is, zero pawns or more. In other words, an infinite number of pawns. So we click on here and we go down and we see greater or more than three or 
three or less. We choose this option for both white and as well as black. Now we click on the search button here, and it's going to filter all of the end games so that we only have end games with three pawns or less per side. It can have three pawns, two pawns, or one pawn. And here we have the list. It is, of course, by chronological order. So the first one is in 1512 by Damiano, 1617, and so on. And that's basically how you filter it. Now let's look at the right side. On the right side, you have solving mode, playing mode, rated mode. And what these are are basically different ways to use it so that you can work on the tactics or endgame strategy, as well as choose how you want to do this. Do you want to be able to have access to hints and tips, or do you want to have hardcore, nothing going, I'm going to solve this on my own? So if you're planning to solve this in a hardcore mode, you would choose rated mode. And this, as you notice, removed the radar button as well as the notation below. If I were to choose playing mode, this allows a tip such as the radar board. It's the same thing as rated mode, but it allows me to access tips as well as the engine. And finally, we have solving mode. Solving mode allows everything. It allows you to find the black moves and white moves as well. And you can click on notation to actually see the solution. Or you can ask for a tip on the radar board. Let's pretend just for the moment that we're planning to try to solve this on our own. We'll go to playing mode. We're allowing ourselves to access tips, but oh, wait a minute. This board is kind of small. I mean, I wish it were a little bit bigger. Well, there's an easy way to do this. In playing mode and rated mode, you can minimize all of this search area. You see this little divider here? Now you might be thinking that I'm gonna tell you to drag and drop it. But if you look at the little hand button there, if I just click on it, it minimizes that area, and now we have the board at its absolute maximum. This I can drag and drop so that the board is made a little bit bigger. And there we go. And now we have the maximum study experience. But wait, how do I get back that search once I'm done? Well, we go to the edge, and you notice the little hand appeared again? We just click on it once, and it's back. That's all there is to it. But let's go back and try to study this position. Now, this is a really nice end game by Troitsky, made in 1906. It is, of course, complex and fascinating. And we're looking at this and we have no idea what we're supposed to do. How are we supposed to win this? What is the idea? All end game studies usually have an idea behind them, you know, not just this will win, but what is the key move? What makes it special? Let's ask for a tip. Now, if we click on the radar board, that is what this is. This is a tip. But what it does is, and I'm going to click on it, it sets basically a future situation. Now, I've put on plus just to make it a little more difficult. In the board here, you can see that we have basically the actual solution, but eight moves ahead. The idea is, is that by giving us a glimpse at the future of this solution, we might be able to guess as to the moves that will lead us to that particular position and therefore divine the solution. If I click on minus, it will make it a little bit closer, minus a little bit closer, and minus even closer yet. And this idea is to allow us to get deeper or easier tips according to our desire. And really, that's all there is to it. Now, if I click on here, I go back, and I can choose all the studies I want. So studies are not only incredibly beautiful endgame compositions, but they can be invaluable tools to help you develop your chess by helping you work on your imagination, calculation skills, as well as your endgame understanding. And if you combine this with your study of endgame with works such as Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual, or maybe the wonderful video series by Karsten Mueller, as well as his book, you will be giving yourself the best chances possible to achieve your chess goals. I know that I will be adding it to my own study plans, as in the Study Chess With Me video series in this channel, and I can only recommend that you do the same. So, happy chess and good mates.